This is a Phoenix Media Program, an innovation of USQ. USQ is a proud sponsor of this radio program. Good morning, it's live and local on Brisbane Youth Radio on 1197 AM and Digital Radio and online at It's currently 10 o'clock and my name is Nick. My name is Alexander. And we have... Good morning, guys. <laughs> How are you? Uh, Alistair's <laughs> back again. And I'm very happy to be back. Sorry, I'm a little bit stuffy this morning. I was recovering all weekend. Oh, poor right. thing. Yeah, you couldn't talk all weekend, could you? No, I could barely move and, and speak and it, w- it was fantastic. It was great. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> it's a great awesome. start to Monday ex- morning. Gave me an excuse not to work or do uni. Woohoo. Yay. Hey. It's, it's not great. but It's not great at all. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's good to be optimistic about it. Oh. Yeah, no, that's okay. We've got a lot of work to catch up on, I'll give you that. But we're here now, and we're going to talk about more space stuff. Ooh, we'll interview yes. later so on. We have a really awesome Lovely. interview. And I'm pumped for it. Um, we've got a few interviews, actually. Now we're going to catch up with Terry and also a special guest interview who might be related oh, to yeah. one of us. Oh. Mm, I wonder. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who. I wonder who. Um, coming up, we've got some powder finger uh, with, on my mind. Uh, but right now, we've got Jess Glynn. With, um, I'll be there. She'll, Fantastic. She'll be there. Uh, coming up. Hey, listen to Mornings Live and Local on Brisbane Youth Radio on 1197 AM and the Jurea Online at It's currently 10 past 10. And now for the latest local news. Ipswich Council wants to recruit the city's youth. Nominations are now open for people aged 16 and 25 to join the Ipswich Youth Advisory Council, a special council for the city's youth to have their voice heard. Elected youth will get a first-hand insight into how local government works and be able to influence council decision-making. Ipswich City Council is looking for young people aged 16 to 25 living in the Ipswich region who are dedicated, enthusiastic and committed to young people issues uh, which, will affect, which will affect and matter to them, uh, keen to learn new skills and experience personal development, interested in becoming involved at, in and planning development of youth events and initiatives, willing to represent the youth of, of Ipswich at a range of events and other duties, and able to listen to and respect the views of his or her peer group. For more info, you can head to ipswich.qrd.gov.au slash community. Forgetfulness was blamed by a driver who pumped fuel into his car at three service stations, then drove off without paying for it. He said he intended to return later to pay, but simply forgot. And in one case, he could not remember where the servo was. But an Ipswich magistrate told the dollar-pinching driver Ben Vlug that if he was going to drive, then he must pay for his petrol or risk jail. Benjamin John Vlug, 29, from Bouval, pleaded guilty in Ipswich Magistrate's court to three counts of stealing fuel, drug driving, and possession of dangerous drugs. With the servos, I was intended to pay. I forgot all about them, Vlug told the court. Your explanation is not acceptable, Magistrate Andy Cridland said in reply. A person has been taken to hospital following a three-vehicle crash in which one car rolled at one mile overnight. Emergency services were called to Lob Street just before 9pm following reports that three cars had crashed. Paramedics assessed three people on the scene and one person who was taken to Ipswich Hospital with minor injuries. Now for less weather around southeast Queensland. It's currently 18 degrees and mostly cloudy with a 50% chance of showers in the afternoon with light winds. And we're expecting a top of 22 degrees uh, today. And that guy who forgot to uh, pay for his petrol. <laughs> Obviously, it wasn't forgetfulness if he was drug driving. In, yeah. <laughs> in, okay, allegedly. Alleg- like, no. You know, uh, oh, wait. He was... Pleaded he, guilty. Yes. So... Hang on, a, let me just Well, he back. pleaded guilty to it, so it was yeah. three counts yes. off. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so he was... So, I mean, just saying... Maybe <laughs> the, the drugs is what made him forget. But, like, still... I don't know. I don't know. I'm on a lot of Panadol and some cold <laughs> medicine. I'm not, I'm not forgetting a lot of things. I think there are different type of, type of drugs. 
<laughs> but possibly, yeah. possibly. I'm more concerned about because I live. See, Lob Street is about four streets away from where I live because I live in Woodend, yeah. and that's insane. I was awake last night at nine p.m. You didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. I yet, heard. But that's abs- that, that's uh, really upsetting. A lot of sirens, like in the distance, but I don't think that was this. There was mm. another accident last night sometime. Mm. Um, well, there so. you go. It's unfortunate. Um, th- thoughts are with the families and the drivers here. Hopefully, mm. they uh, they get through it. Absolutely. Um, but yes, today in, in the news, I don't know what else to talk about. It's just one of those mornings, you know what I mean? Like, it's Monday. It's yes, just, Monday morning. We do this every Monday. But <laughs> <laughs> this morning's a little different. It's one of those, yes, it's very different mornings. Mm. Like, ooh, very special morning. I right? love how this, sorry, back to the forgetfulness Oh, guy. go for it, He's yeah. like, with the servos I was intended to pay, I forgot all about them. The response was like so blunt. Your explanation is just not acceptable. <laughs> Like it sounds well, like it's, a mother. It's, it does sound like something you would say when you were thirteen in grade seven. Exactly. Yeah. It sounds or like miss. a mother grilling her child. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, miss, I forgot to pay for the petrol, miss. Don't I, give me the attention. I did miss. that. I accidentally did that once. I went out to buy a power raid and I forgot to pay for it. Oh. Oh, shoplifting. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Really? So, sometimes you just forget because I think I was sick. Like, I was recovering from a sickness and I just forgot. I went back the day after yeah, to pay for and, it. Yeah, and they're like, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, like, I went back the day after with the empty bottle. Like, hey, I walked out with this the other day. I forgot to pay for it. I'm really sorry. And he just laughed and he just like took the money and then just gave me my change. Which was, oh, that's, that's, really, that's awesome. really good of you though. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. So there's a difference because you actually went... You went back. And I, I felt so bad. I was like, oh, I did not even mean to do it. Because sometimes, I'm not going to lie, when it comes to fuel, it's hard to forget, but sometimes you, you just forget. You know what I hate? I hate the idea of filling up and paying at the pump because I hate other people looking at you and going, you didn't pay because you didn't walk in. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> like, I know that there's, like, it doesn't work unless you pay. Like, there are some locks on it and stuff like that. So you have to pay before it starts so pumping like the fuel. Tap your card beforehand. Yeah. Okay. You put, so it, you, you put you, a dedicated you, yeah, amount. You enter the amount you wish to pay and then you pay for it. You get your receipt, then you fill up. Then, so you pay yeah. first pa- uh, pump later. Yeah, then the pump then the pump works. But but because you never have to walk in. And then, then, then uh, sorry, they now have an app where you prepay your fuel on that. And that just makes me feel even worse. It just worse. Makes it look dodgy, yeah. Yeah, because you rock up, put the fuel in, and then you drive off. And everyone's going to look at you going, you didn't pay. You're naughty. Hey. <laughs> uh, well, coming up, we've got some Ed Sheeran uh, with Perfect. But right now, we have Count On Me by Judah Kelly. Lately, I ain't been the same. And that was Perfect by Ed Sheeran. It's currently 20 past 10 years in the morning. It's live and local on Brisbane Youth Radio on 1197 AM and the Dreyer and Lana Phoenix Now it's time for our little sports segment with After the Eddie host Terry Pascoe joining us live now. Hi, Terry. <laughs> Hi, yeah, no, I've got some breaking news for you guys. Ooh, the, Queensland Origin, the Queensland Origin side's just been named about uh, 20 minutes ago, so it's pretty close to what we all thought it would be. So you've got Billy Slater, Valentine Holmes, Inglis, Chambers, Gagai, which means uh, Darius Boyd, the Brisbane skipper, has missed out. Uh, Cameron Munster and Ben Hunt in the halves, and in your wood pack, you've got Napa, McCulloch, Wallace, Cooper, uh, Kafusi and Josh McGuire and Michael Morgan, Josh Papali, Cohen Hess and Jai Arrow will be on the bench, which is huge news for Jai Arrow because uh, it's only been his second year in first grade or in a regular spot in first grade. So it's good to see him stepping up. Now, the Origin game, game one, will be next Wednesday. So not this Wednesday, next uh, June next 6th Wednesday, yep. at the MCG. So uh, it's all set. Um, and the New South Wales side should be named... Uh, later today. Oh, that's very exciting. Um, so, out of that team, are there any surprises for you? Like- um, not, not really. Mm. Uh, probably Matt Scott being dropped. Uh, I mean, there was also, we didn't know if he'd be able to play anyway because uh, he may be suspended for a shoulder charge uh, that happened on Friday night. Um, but yeah, for him to be dropped, he's a workhorse. He's He's been one of our top forwards for a long time. So, it's interesting to see that they've left him out. So do you think this is a good team for Queensland this year? Do you think we'll take home the trophy? <laughs> oh, look, it's it's very hard to say. Like, we don't know what this New South Wales side is. True. Um, yeah, like, it, it's been really funny. Queensland, you can pretty much choose your back line. You know who, who it was going to be. Um, and sorry, in saying that, I should say, you'd assume Daly Cherry events will come into camp just to come off a bed hunt because... He has been suffering from a bad cork, uh, which he was pulled off the field yesterday. Um, and, yeah, so it was... Oh, no, sorry, no, you say on Saturday night. So 
we'll see how it goes, but I'd assume that's where he'd be covered. But, yeah, I guess it's... Until I see the New South Wales side, it's going to be too hard. It's like, I'm a Queenslander. My passion, I'm always going to go for Queensland. Yes. But if you're a realistic choice, it's going to be very close. Cool. So we'll go back to our, our local QRL uh, type of thing. On the weekend, uh, the, the Jets first, the Magpies. But the Magpies won, I believe, was did you say the sixth game in a row? Uh, sorry, the Tweed Head Seagulls. Oh, yeah, Tweed Head they... Seagulls. Sorry, I, I got confused. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so <laughs> that's okay. Uh, so the, it was a tie. Uh, wait, ooh, which one? All right, so it was Tweed Head up against Sunshine Coast. So this game was set to be a blockbuster because San Diego State is sort of getting into the area of they need to start winning games to make finals. Yep. And in particular, now that they've lost this game, um, you know, you got to start thinking, you know, they were in the grand final last year. So, you know start wondering what's going on but I mean Tweed Heads are also a tough side they're, they've won like I said six in a row now um, it'd be interesting though like they've got a star-studded line of um, Gold Coast Titans players or seconds players that, that are playing for their side but they have um, lost uh, Brendan McGrady to a knee injury now we don't know the extent of it yet he'll get mm-hmm. scans today um, and he was um, he only lasts only nine minutes before he cups that injury so uh, it was good to see that the the sea, sea, seagulls were uh, able to still continue without too much drama. Oh, that's very exciting for them because I see on the ladder that they are but they're currently on the top eight, being eighth place. But they are working their way up and up and up. So, you know, if, if they get the win next next week, they would of course go further up, which would be pretty good for them. Yeah, look, uh, that's right. So it depends on that. They'll have a really tough competition. They've got Redcliffe uh, next week, so Redcliffe. Mm. This week played the Capras on the Channel Nine game. Um, they may, Reckless may be out, out uh, may not have their lead uh, player Cameron Cullen. Hey, he is on report for uh, high tackle, and it did look pretty bad. So you, you may assume that he he'll be out for at least one week. Uh, but he hasn't got a rap sheet, so he might be fine. He might be able to play with an early guilty plea. Uh, but yeah, you'd assume they might be missing him, so it could be interesting. Um, but yeah, so Reckless defeated Central twenty to fourteen. Uh, I guess Central were unlucky in that game as well because they just ran out of players, had so many injuries through the game, and Big oh. Dave, Dave Taylor had to play close to eighty minutes. So um, you know, for a man that's one hundred and forty something kilos, it probably would have taken a bit of toll. But his experience would have helped that side. And the Pride vs Devils game, which was twenty nine to ten. We get, but I'm going to plug off the 80 like I always do <laughs> on this <laughs> segment. Um, this Wednesday, we'll have Jay Clifford from Northern Pride and after the 80. Um, so that'll be exciting. But do you, can you tell, tell us more about that game as well? Yeah, look, um, the Pride, this was also going to be a bit of a blockbuster game, but I guess it ended up being a bit more of a blowout than what we assumed. Um, yeah, Pride won 29-10. You're right, yeah, we will have Jake Clifford on. He's been, he's been their star player. Um, he's re-signed with the Cowboys as well. So you got to think that he's got that influence of Jonathan Thurston and Michael Morgan behind him, and he could be a potential replacement for Jonathan Thurston once uh, Thurston decides to hang up the boots. Awesome. Again, thank you so much for joining us this week, Terry. Of course, you can catch Terry on After the 80 on Wednesdays uh, for State Edition and Local Edition. And again, thank you for joining us this morning. No worries, mate. Have a good one. You too. Left Outside Alone by Anastasia right now and after that, Magic by Coldplay. This Day in History. Listen to Mornings Live and Local on Brisbane Youth Radio on 1197 AM and Digital Radio and Alana Phoenix Radio.com.au. It's currently around half past 10 ish. It's no, give it's more like 20 to 11. <laughs> give a, okay, it's 20 to 11. <laughs> I thought I could get away with saying half past 10 because saying half past 10 is a fun thing to do. Anyway, today in history. <laughs> Look, Alex, Take it away, yeah, Alex. Yeah, sure. sure. Okay, so, um, to start off, this day in history, um, in 1937, Volkswagen VW, the German automobile manufacturer, is funded. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. And right. you were saying before that this hot hatch sort of... So, okay, so uh, there was... The go uh, the sorry no the the Beetle was a hatchback that was supposed to be affordable, easily to repair. You, know, you could buy parts for the car in like service stations, um, but it was very like 
as far as power goes from the engine, there wasn't much of it. It was a very, very, very slow car. So to replace it, um, VW wanted to make a hatch that was both sporty but also affordable because they realized mm. that it wasn't just the rich people who wanted fast cars, and they created the Golf. So the Golf was the competitor to the Beetle. They were fighting itself, basically. <laughs> VW was fighting itself for the Beetle. And the Golf was the, one of the first sort of sporty hatchbacks and, and sort of gave birth to the whole hot hatch line of cars. So mm. I think every single one of us here in the studio right now drives a hot hatch, which all is thanks to the Golf. So what, what car do you drive, Alistair? Mini Cooper. Hot hatch. What That's car? a three. Hot hatch. And I drive a Ford Fiesta, which is a hot hatch. That's a lovely car. It is, except for the transmission issue. But we're not going to go yeah. into that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which mine's been repaired, thankfully. And it's a, it's a beautiful car. It's won awards mm. for its... its um, it reminds me a lot of the old Ford Focus from the 80s. Like that, that yes, nice, like yeah. sleek looking hot yeah, hatch. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a fantastic car to drive. Its handling is phenomenal. Like you could... Oh, it's just that's, you can't explain it. It's, mm. it's a different type of car. I would attest to that. The, the Focus and Fiestas are, are pretty regular cars. The, the anyway, new, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Volkswagen. <Moving> <laughs> um, in 1972, White House plumbers, in quotations, you know, yeah. air quotes, uh, break into the Democratic, uh, Democratic National Headquarters at Watergate in Washington D.C. So they were plumbers. Plumbers. Yeah, but that's... they broke in and they. This is there a movie about this? Uh, there's a good movie. Well, in Forrest Gump, it's it's in there for like 13 seconds because oh, Forrest okay. Gump is like, hey, there's a bunch of guys out there and the uh, oh, really? their power's out. I don't know if you want to help them <laughs> because yeah, it's it's them. Yeah, but yeah, but um, there's a movie Frost Nixon isn't really about that, but it is about Sir David Frost mm. uh, interviewing Richard Nixon about the Watergate scandal, and it does involve that. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. there has been quite a few documentaries and movies about that. That okay, whole section it, of Nixon's life. It seems like a pretty cool setup for a heist movie. Oh, oh. I'm sure it's been inspired. Yeah, by that's things. why I think I'm yeah. sure there's there's a movie out there about it. Uh, next up, we have. Um, so yeah, in uh, <laughs> do you want me to do it? <laughs> Who's going to read it? Yeah, I'll do it. Read it. <laughs> in Milan, Italy, after 22 years of restoration work, Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece, The Last Supper, is back on display in 1999. It's a lovely piece of work. Yeah. Uh, That's all I can say about it. Because I'm you, type Have you, you know which one it is? Yeah, it's the Jesus one. Yes. Yeah. It's the Jesus one. <laughs> the one that people can it's like. It's the Jesus one. <laughs> Mick Mullenhauer, 2018. It's the Jesus we'll one. We'll add that to the wall of quotes. Um, oh, my wall of quotes. <laughs> yeah. I'll have that photo saved. Really? Yeah, I do. I love how people remake it. I love that. We should remake one here. We really should. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Uh, so... <laughs> In 2002, the last steel girder is removed from the original World Trade Center site. Cleanup duties officially end with closing ceremonies at Ground Zero in Manhattan, New York City. I like oh, that wow. one when I saw it today. I'm like, that's something that everybody kind of knows. Mm. That happened mm. today, like in 2002. In 2002. Yeah. So how long did it take them to clean up? Like, what? What happened in, in 2001? Months, September, about nine months to clean up? Yeah. Oh, wow. Not a small job. But like that's still, I'll say it's still pretty quick. It's still pretty quick, yeah. I must admit, but it's not, you know. Yeah, it's a lot of debris. Yeah, yeah. And while while we're on that, thoughts and prayers out to the families and the people yeah. that were lost during that tragic incident. Absolutely. Now, Alistair, you have some music. Yes, I was yes. I was happy about this one. So this is today was a bit of a was was a great day in music. So today, the May twenty eighth in nineteen sixty three, the Free Wheel and Bob Dylan album mm. came out that day, which is very much considered one of Dylan's greatest works, as, uh, as well as Blood on the Tracks. Uh, in 1977, the first and last album by the Sex Pistols, God Save the Queen, came out, mm. and that was a defining moment in punk music, and you could easily say was the the start of the punk movement in Britain. And then a personal favourite of mine, in 1983, uh, the first single ever, ever released by UK indie rock band The Smiths, Hand in Glove, came out. Uh, what's interesting is the story behind it. They paid two hundred and fifty pounds in that time for a one day session. Mm. Oh, wow. So that that band only paid for one day, two hundred and fifty pounds, and it became their first single. And they, there you go. That's that day in music. What? Sorry, what year was that? Nineteen eighty three. Let me just see uh, if how much that is in today's money. So if I quickly, quickly Google. Mm. And quickly. there's another one. I might might as well because I remember in nineteen eighty nine, which is Alistair's favorite year in music, because a lot of his favorite albums came out that year. Yes. In 1989, on today, the Stone Roses came out with their first album, The Stone Roses. So that's another great, great album that came out. And that's that was that year in music. Oh, wow. So interesting. How's your Googling going? Getting yeah, no, the internet's a bit slow. 250 pounds. So 250 pounds is... 
I can't find it. Oh, I think the pounds is about double. It's a, it is now, but back then it's a little. Oh, back different. then, yeah, yeah. So well, I have to try and find how much it, in pounds it was back then, and then convert how much that is to today's Australian. I would so, roughly say it'd be about eight hundred dollars. It has so two hundred and fifty dollars in nineteen sixty three had the same buying power as two thousand dollars in two thousand and eighteen. So this is eighty three. Eighty three. Yeah. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Let me just change <laughs> that real quick. <laughs> And click, 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 click. 83, calculate, $631. So oh. around around under a grand. You got you got to think about that though. One day, because I've, I've done recording before because I'm, I'm an amateur music, music enthusiast and I have recorded before. Mm. Uh, one day is not a lot of time. One day is maybe. I was about to say that. One day. One day is eight hours album. maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, no, it was one single. One single. I mean, you got to think about that. You'd but think it wouldn't take too long. They uh, recorded one day it is, and edited it. Mastered it, yeah. Mixed it, yeah, in one day. Aww. That's not a lot of time, which means like you've got to give props to the band. They knew what they were doing. They knew exactly how they wanted to sound. They yeah. knew exactly how to master. It was to, to a band that came out with one of their best singles first up in one day. That's a testament to the producer and the band themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. It's amazing. Anyway, yeah. well, I'll, I, I recommend sticking around after these songs because we've got a special spacey themed interview. Yes. This is so great. this uh, last week, uh, for anybody who remembered, uh, we spoke about it, and anybody who actually was there, Sky Gazing Live was mm. last week, Wednesday night, where we attempted to break the world record of how many people looked up. And you were there. How, how was it? Here at Springfield? Yeah. More than I expected showed up. It wasn't oh, really? a big amount, but more than I expected. Uh, it it was really, really nice. The clouds started to slowly come over, and we were like, oh, no. <laughs> but uh, not enough to to like not allow us to see the moon, because the, re- the world record was to, to look at the moon. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, Lovely, awesome. yeah. Come, coming up, I Don't Want to Live Forever by Zoom Malak and Taylor Swift. But right now, Don't Go Break My Heart by the Backstreet Boys in the in the Backstreet. Oh, <laughs> I, love, I love 2001. <laughs> and that was I Don't Want to Live Forever by Zayn Malak and Taylor Swift. Listen to Mornings Live and Local on Brisbane, Youth Radio, 1197 AM and the Radio and Alana Phoenix Radio.com. Dot A-U. Okie dokie. So, QPAC's annual festival of arts and entertainment for children out of the box is less than a month away. This morning in Red Bank Plains, more than 100 uh, th- Year 3 students have been involved in launching one of the special events for this year's Out of the Box. 35 schools across Queensland will take part in what's called Dance Like No One Is Watching. So, what is it? John Kots- uh, sorry, John Kotsas is, on- is the Chief Executive of QPAC. Good morning, John. Good morning, mate. How are you? Not too bad yourself. So, what is dance like? Uh, no one. What is uh, sorry? What is, is dance like? No one is watching. Well, it's it's a culmination of a series of workshops that have been happening um, from between um, Red Bank Plains down as far as um, uh, the Gold Coast hinterland and north of the North Coast, where we've been involved with about thirty-five to forty schools. And what we're doing is putting dance teachers, uh, dance teacher artists, in, into schools to work with teachers to help kids um, build their um, artistic literacy. And the reason we're doing that is artistic literacy actually helps build emotional literacy. And we think the most important thing to help kids do is actually actually build their um, their personal resilience. And these workshop programs actually do that. They actually build confidence for kids. Awesome. So what's been happening there in Red Bank Plains this morning? Um, well, this morning I was just watching a workshop. We've got four teacher artists um, working in, in a classroom with um, children who are in year three, and um, they're teaching them a whole range of movement. And the purpose of that is really both to actually help the kids um, start to move, which helps them engage the rest of their body and they learn quicker. But also we're providing um, some in-service training for teachers so that when we leave, the teachers will be able to, to maintain the... Um, the workshops as well. This all culminates in four weeks when they all come to QPAC for a really large dance party as part of Out of the Box. And when they come back a couple of days later, they have a similar big celebration dance party for their school um, here at the school grounds. That's amazing. And, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. What, what's the age group target for this? Um, well, the festival is aimed at um, children zero to eight, eight and under, but this actual workshop is aimed at children who are in year three, um, or year four. Okay. Nice. So, so, I, so, so seven, seven, eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I believe out of the boxes are between tw- uh, June twenty sixth and July first this year. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. 
Awesome. Yeah. And while we have you on the phone at the moment, uh, it's been announced that QPAC is getting a new theatre. So can you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> for some time now, um, QPAC's been working at almost full capacity. We have four theatres and um, our attendances are very high and we think that the Queensland public actually love attending um, live performance. And so we've been prosecuting a case that it's time for us to think about another theatre and to actually build one and to have uh, the possibility of more productions and more attendances at QPAC. This is really a strategic decision by the government to build a new theatre because it's really about building the future. This theatre will actually service um, new and emerging artists now. It's about for new audiences and will also help the local companies grow into the next um, level of space. At the moment, we've got a theatre, the Playhouse, which is 850 seats. And then once um, companies like particularly um, Queensland Ballet have outgrown that, the next space for them is the, the Lyric Theatre, which is a huge 2,000-seater. The new theatre, which will be about 1,500 seats, is an interim step and will help companies be able to grow their audience and their capacity to actually fill these spaces. So it's an exciting time for us. Uh, good morning, John. Just Al here. just want to say it's actually so exciting to hear that news coming from, from QPAC and especially from yourself being the chief executive. Uh, I've been to uh, QPAC and it's many different theatres many times and love with the acoustics, seen many performance entertainers, bands there. So I'm just very happy to hear that there is an expansion happening. So it's, it's great news for, for people like myself who are really happy to go and see a, a QPAC production. So I wanted to ask, uh, what is your approximate time for that opening or uh, what the plans for expansion? Well, we, we will start now, um, now that the announcement's been made and the funds have been allocated, we will start planning and I would hope that we're opening the doors and welcoming the first audiences in about four years' time. But in the meantime, we have to start doing programs to prepare, to actually start building numbers. At the moment, we sell about a million tickets and we have about another 300,000 people that come to QPAC um, for... Um, for free events, so our attendances are about 1.3 million. I hope that when we um, open the new theatre, we'll have about another couple of hundred thousand people who are prepared to buy tickets. So what we've got to do now is start setting programs that encourage our audiences to grow to about, you know, 1.2 million sold tickets and three to 400,000 free tickets. I'm certain that you'll you'll reach that number purely because of the, the, the reputation QPAC has to put on fantastic shows and its ambience and how easy it is to just secure tickets there. It's it's a great company and it, it is very good to hear this sort of news and thank thank you for saying that. Four years actually not a lot of time to to build and expand. That's uh it's quite amazing. No, yeah, it's not a lot of time, but I think the team at QPAC are all it's a great team. They're very professional and very focused and we've been thinking about how we might do this for a number of years now. And now that we've got the green light, um, you know, it, today's day one and the team's really focused on how we might achieve those goals. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Before we let you go, uh, how do we find out more information about the Out of the Box Festival? Um, what I'll do is I'll get Cindy, our publicist, to actually um, call in with the website um, address and probably the best in, the best place to get all the information is the website address for Out of the Box. That's awesome. So we'll get her on the line after this song yep. break. Again, thank you so much for uh, joining us this morning. Ta, thanks a lot. Thank you. Awesome. So right now we have Burn by Ellie Golding here on Phoenix Radio. And that was Never I Ever. Oh. Sorry, I interrupted them for a second. Never Ever by the Ruben Sarah. How dare you. <laughs> You listen to mornings live and local on Brisbane Youth Radio on 1197 AM and digital radio So, coming up in the show today, it's at 11 o'clock, so it's the middle of the show. Mm. Our space interview with yeah. our special space guest. And we've got a special family member interview again. Who's the family member, if you want to guess? Which one of us three has their family member? On. Are you trying to say which one of the three of us have family members? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Who's you guys need to you? consider the order of how you approximate a sentence. <laughs> oh, you, I can barely speak oh. English. You know that. You know that. But <laughs> if you want to guess who who's like... Yeah, we'll, we'll guess. Which one of us three? Dad or sister. Shaw, Bollenhauer, Artesi. He's going to be. At Phoenix Radio on the Twitter. Pick yeah. Up, pick up right now. <laughs> have a guess. <laughs> have, a guess. <laughs> have a guess. We'll have a poll. <laughs> You'll get one in three chance of being correct. And if you are correct, we'll do the toilet flush sound for you. <laughs> and we'll say your Twitter handle name on air. Exactly. Shout out, boys.
Um, <laughs> so right now we're going to have a quick uh, sponsor break, but after that we've got some songs and in our interview. This is a Phoenix Media Program, an innovation of USQ. Mornings live and local on Brisbane Youth Radio on 1197 AM and Digi Radio and at au. Now, Alex. Yes. Do you like space? I love space. And you were just talking about, I think it was last week. Yes. Um, that you went to the to Wednesday, Wednesday the thing? Wednesday night uh, stargazing live. Yes. Yeah. A world record attempt trying to break the world record of how many people are looking into the sky at one time. Which is awesome. And joining us now is Professor John T. Ho- uh, Horner from uh, USQ Toowoomba. John T., how are you today? I'm not too bad yourself. Good yeah, I'm not too bad. Um, so, obviously, you're, you are a professor, which is pretty cool. Um, yep, so I Richard- finally got a promotion, so I'm getting old and rusty, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. So, next semester, you're discussing, uh, we were talking beforehand, mm. you're discussing that um, you're going to have your own subject or something like that yep. at USQ Toowoomba. Do you want to talk about that for a bit? Can do. So I have always quite enjoyed the teaching side of things. I come from an amateur astronomy background when I was way young, when I, I started when I was about five years old. And when I was about 10 at my local astronomy society, I started giving talks to this incredibly patient crowd of spot welders and miners and brickies and, you know, all this weird assortment of elderly men from the point of view of 10 year old who were really supportive. Mm. And I've just always quite enjoyed communicating the science that I love and trying to get other people enthused and excited. And part of being a professor at the uni is obviously teaching to the undergraduate courses. So I get to create my own course, which is great because I get to talk about the things I love and try and get more people engaged with it. I know a lot of our students possibly won't go on to be scientific researchers, but it's still really important to get people hooked up and fired up about science and learn some of the techniques, but also get a feeling for our place in the universe and try to answer those questions of what's the solar system like, where did it come from? Maybe even are we alone in the universe? Yeah. Well, um, so tell us a little bit about what's happening in space right now, a bit of news. Well, there's all sorts of good stuff going on. Astronomy is one of these great subjects because there are always new and exciting news stories coming. We had, a couple of weeks ago, the announcement in the budget that Australia is going to have its own space agency. So we're finally getting involved at a governmental level in one of the world's biggest and certainly the fastest growing industry on the planet. You know, an industry that's achieved growth for each of the last 10 years, year after year after year, at more than the 10% level it's Crazy, crazy, crazy. And we're the 72nd country to finally have a space agency to be able to be involved with this. So that's really good news for us as Australian space researchers. It means we're finally going to have an official source of grant funding and some oversight in how that money's spent so we can benefit the country, essentially. Previously, a lot of Australia's best and brightest young researchers were trained up in space research in Australia, then went overseas to find jobs. So we have this brain drain going from Australia to NASA, to the European Space Agency, to JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency. Now, hopefully, we'll be able to keep that homegrown talent and really make huge strides on our own. Mm. Now, now if someone wants to get get into astronomy, um, how, how, how would you recommend for them to get started? I'm a real advocate for local astronomy societies. That's where I really cut my teeth. So I got hooked when I was five years old by a TV program, something called The Sky at Night. Not quite the same as Stargazing Live, but the same general idea, you know, making astronomy popular, Mm. making it publicly accessible, all the rest of it. When I was about eight, though, my parents took me down to join my local astronomy society in Yorkshire, in the north of England. And I've never looked back with that, because the beauty is astronomy is a really lovely hobby to share. It's one of these things that's better to do in a group than on your own especially when other people in the society have their own telescopes that they can show you things through, they can teach you the night sky. The other real advantage of the Astronomy Society was that we had, every month, guest speakers, people like myself, I guess now, professors of astronomy at the different universities would come down and give talks on the work they're doing, the cutting-edge stuff they're doing, with some effort made to make it accessible for that non-specialist but highly interested audience. And some did a better job than others of that. You know, not every good scientist is a good communicator. But it was a really good way of keeping me inspired. And it also meant that I had access to a really good observatory. So 
didn't need to spend a huge amount of money on a telescope because there was one there I could use. Mm. And it also meant that as I was going through my teenage years and starting to wonder where to go to university, who to talk to, what subjects I should study, I had this continual stream of people who'd already made that journey that I wanted to take who could give me really good advice on where to go, what to study, what I needed to do at high school, things like that. So I'm a really big advocate of things like that. In our area, I know for certain that there's a really good astronomy society in Brisbane called Brisbane Astronomical Society. There's also the Astronomical Association of Queensland. Okay. And they run an event every year in August at a lion's camp called Camp Duckadang, up just north of Esk in the Avoca Vale. Um, so for those of you from Springfield, you head out towards the Mumbra bit, take a right off the highway, drive up for a couple of hours, and you're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> this event's called Queensland Astro Fest. You have to pay to attend, and that's to kind of cover the camping costs and yeah. the food and everything else. And it's a gathering of the amateur astronomers from across Queensland. So usually there are about 50 to 100 people there on the weekend, I think a little bit fewer during the week, all camping out with their own telescopes, all happy to share their hobby. I'm going along for the weekend of the 4th and 5th of August this year to give a couple of guest speaker talks and do a bit of astrophotography in the evening, get some photos of the night sky and stuff like that. So I'd really recommend people who are interested, particularly after Stargazing Life has inspired them, to check out their local astronomy society and if they can, come along to Queensland Astro Fest. Wow, that's that's really right. I didn't even know that little societies like that existed. That's going to be really helpful for, for people like myself. Um, is before we... Sorry. Sorry, go on. Sorry, yeah, so just before we go, um, you mentioned about sort of trying to keep the brain power here in Australia. Um, yeah. And you helped with, um, there's a, a NASA telescope sort of a program happening. To tell us a bit about that. There is. So this is one of those great examples of the way that Australia can give a unique contribution on the international stage. The story here is that NASA launched a spacecraft called TESS a few weeks ago. TESS is a Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. And its job is to essentially stare at the night sky from above the Earth's orbit so it never has daytime to worry about, continually for two years. And as it does that, it's going to gradually look at one piece of the night sky and then the next and then the next. So over the two years, it surveys the entire southern sky and the entire northern sky. And what it's looking for is evidence of planets orbiting all those stars that you see in the night sky. It's going to look at 200,000 stars every minute and a further 20 million stars every half an hour. Wow. So it's going to survey a stupid number of stars looking for telltale flickers that might indicate that those stars have planets going around them blocking out some of the light. Yeah. The problem with this is that Tess is going to find thousands or even tens of thousands of things that it thinks are planets. But in order to confirm that there really are planets, you've got to do more observations and you've got to use ground-based instruments to follow up each discovery in exquisite detail mm. to be certain that it really is a planet rather than something else coming in. Now, when you're doing the Southern Hemisphere sky, you therefore need telescopes in the Southern Hemisphere. And to do this kind of work, you can't just have a telescope where you get one night per month. You need something that every night that it's clear can be hammering on these targets looking at the night sky. And that's where we come in. We a building up on the Darling Downs near Toowoomba, a dedicated exoplanet observatory called Minerva Australis. We actually got first light from it a couple of weeks ago where we took our first images. So we're bang on line, ready to work with NASA. Mm. And our job is that NASA says we think there's a planet here. We swing our suite of telescopes over to it and watch that star and watch that star to confirm, yes, it is, no, it isn't. So we're providing a really vital, useful service to NASA in allowing the spacecraft's potential discoveries to be confirmed so you don't tend to think of it you see stories about nasa missions and you think that's happening overseas over there not not our cup of tea not local news yeah yeah but we've got a southeast queensland hook in this we're going to be a really vital cog in the whole machine and we'll like, in fact be the only dedicated southern hemisphere observatory doing this work so we're the people that nasa will come to to help them out and i think that's kind of cool yeah, that's, that's really awesome. cool. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us today, John T. It's uh, lovely to meet you as well. You seem like a blast to be around. I actually really <laughs> want to meet you now, to be, <laughs> to be honest. Um, well, you're always welcome to come on up. I believe Spencer is going to be looking at the studio up into, Tw into Toowoomba at some ooh, point ooh. in the next couple of months. So maybe you should have a word with the boss and see if you can come for a visit. Okay. Could even do a live broadcast from campus at some point. Yeah, that would be the, awesome. From the big boss himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for joining us um, right now. We have Cheap Thrills by Sia here on Phoenix Radio.
It's the morning, it's live and local on Brisbane Youth Radio, 1197 AM and it's radio, and online It's currently 25 minutes past 11 and breaking news. Alistair. Oh, I'm excited for this one. All right, so apparently in breaking news, the Ipswich suburbs where Uber Eats is now available. Ooh. Uber Eats has launched in Ipswich, but not everyone will be happy about it. Oh, I don't know oh. about them. Oh. <laughs> only, re- only residents on one side of the city will be able to order the online oh, food no. delivery service within larger western suburbs like Brassel, just outside the delivery zone. So if you're in Woodend, Bouval, Ipswich Central, Raceview, Red Bank Plains, Goodna, Springfield or Brookwater, you're A-OK. However, if you're in Mount Crosby... Kara- uh, Karana Downs, Ripley, Waycol, oh. and parts of Umanto, you'll need to wait just a little bit longer. So, uh, summary, there are now 15 restaurants that are available for those uh, rest- for those areas that I first mentioned. We So, for those ones for Uber Eats, we've got Zambrero's, Umanto, Birdie's Chicken and Burgers, Brody's Chicken and Burgers, Z- uh, Zambrero, Ipswich, and Umanto, so two, Ruby Chew's Burgers and Shakes, just outside Limelight and Riverlink, North Ipswich. Uh, Noodle Box Umanto, Get a Burger Umanto, Tie on Ipswich, Montezuma, North Ipswich, just outside Riverlink, Delhi Junction, Mozzarella, Fella, Pizzeria, Far East, Thai Silver Key, Ipswich, Punjab Curry, Curry Club, Ipswich, and Beans and Greens Cafe in Ipswich Central. Many of these restaurants have already uh, offered delivery as a service via their own apps or websites, including Zambrero's, Birdie's, Brody's, and Ipswich on Thai. And yeah, there you go. So that's the 15 that are available. Mm. A lot of, uh, there's also grilled, I know does Uber Eats here in Springfield. I don't think there's a grilled in Ipswich though, is there? Yeah, there's no, one here in Springfield. Yeah, we got, I've oh, been in Springfield, yeah, yeah. and like not, not we got, in Ipswich. We got Get a Burger yeah. in Ipswich. And uh, Shanturo's here in Ipswich also delivers, yeah, because yeah, I had it the other night from Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great service though. It like is. delivery is such an, because I'm lazy and yeah. I like drive. <laughs> but like, you know, it's just very handy. It is, and what's really great is when you when you when you take your order, it tracks where they are. Yeah. And so our guy said that he was on a bicycle, but he was going really fast for a bicycle <laughs> and was in here for within five minutes on a jeep. So, oh wow. <laughs> yeah. um, but I've done it uh, before to get food to uni because I'm like I don't feel like really? like feel like cause I'm always you know busy working, yeah, I'm a busy yeah, yeah. worker. Busy. Uh, <laughs> Nick, how did you order that? Because I tried to do that for last Wednesday night. Sky the sky. I was trying to get pizza delivered to the Oval so that I could have it. I'll show you later. Okay. Because <laughs> I found that like, there wasn't an address that I could take it to. It was just the road. Well, if you go, well, if you go onto Google, you can Google the uni's address. That's what I did. I was worried that they would drop it out the front, like on the front oh, road, instead okay. of coming down the side to, yeah. Just uni problems. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we got some uh, world yes. news this morning. Um, so US officials in summit planning talks with North Korea and, oh, geez, Penman Jom. Uh, American and North Korean officials have met on the, at the border truce village of Panmunjom in preparation for a possible North Korea-US summit as North Korea's Kim Jong-un was cited as reaffirming his commitment to meet with the US President Donald Trump. Which was interesting because, did you hear that Donald yeah, Trump cancelled cancelled it. Yeah. To save um, face, they say, to save face, he cancelled it first instead of... Well, what does he mean by that? Basically, instead of Kim Jong-un cancelling on the US, it's the US is cancelling on... But it's like, it's I, like I didn't break like up with psychology. you, you broke up with me. It's uh, like reverse yeah. psychology. Has anyone here seen that movie, The Negotiator, with Samuel Jackson? I don't think I have. I don't know. Okay, well, there's a scene with uh, Samuel Jackson yeah. and the other person uh, who's uh, Sable. Mm. Um, so Sable and Samuel Jackson. Sable is really angry with Samuel Jackson, mm. but Jackson calls him and says, like, you know, what have you done? So Sable answers the call, but then just hangs up. Oh, Hangs up. Samuel mm. calls again. Sable picks it up, just hangs up. And he just says, like, it's a game. I'm declining him, so he can't decline me. Yeah. It's uh, professor psychology. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's some juicy gossip mm. from North Korea. <laughs> right. So, right there. Alex, um, did you want to read this? Yeah, segment? yeah. So the next one is uh, Morgan Freeman's devastated by CNN report says he has not assaulted women. Morgan Freeman says he likes to compliment people to make them feel at ease around him, but that he has never sexually assaulted women. So... Well, um, There's not much we yeah. can add to this yeah. purely because it is such a contentious it's a subject. It's all allegations and stuff like so, that. So, so far, there's been 16 people to come out, eight saying that they have 16. witnessed it. Yep. Allegedly. Wow. So, when I first read it, yep. I, I I heard it was only eight people had to come out saying that. Well, eight said they've experienced it, and the oh, other eight have uh, said they've witnessed allegedly it. Allegedly seen it, yeah. Okay. Allegedly. Yeah, Everything yeah, yeah. is alleged at this mm. point in time. Uh, and it is... 
CNN to cover it first, or at least exploit the story and make it uh, big. Was it CNN? Yeah. I saw... Well, it's a report by CNN, so they're okay, the ones yeah. that made it big. It's yeah. like Inside Edition. Uh, so there you go. Uh, so Freeman's obviously devastated about the reports. Uh, he said, I admit that I am someone who feels a need to try to make women and men feel more appreciated and at ease around me. As part of that, I would often try to joke with and compliment women in what I thought was a lighthearted and humorous way. Mm. Um, oh. See, it's very contentious yeah. because cause, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll say it. I'll, oh, oh. I'm gonna oh, what are you going to say? Should I get dump button ready? <laughs> <laughs> no, because, so, you know, in in the report, it's allegedly saying he acts like the creepy 80-year-old uncle, right? Yeah. But people can experience that and take it the wrong way. E.g., if I hold the door open for someone at a restaurant that's like, uh, say, uh, a little girl and her mother is behind her, but I'm opening it for the little girl. The mother could possibly be saying, that's a bit weird. Or like she can open the door on herself. That's something that happens all, today. Yeah. It's all about yeah. perspective. And I'm not, I'm not at all defending. This is all, I'm not at all defending. So please put this, uh, words on the record. This is not a defense. Mm. This is not an accusation for Freeman mm. nor or against. I'm just clearly stating that the political and socioeconomic context that, uh, people take uh, people putting people at ease, such as men putting women at ease, can be misconstrued. Yeah. Yeah. That is evident. It cannot be denied. They've, and I'm, again, relating it to the news report. Mm. This isn't defence. This isn't an accusation. But there have been cases before where uh, gestures made in supposed goodwill or alleged goodwill can be misconstrued as yeah. something that isn't goodwill. I think times have changed a lot and Freeman is no young chicken. So mm. I think times where things that used to be acceptable in the oldie days are no longer acceptable today. Mm. I would say that. I say I, I would say that's a big part. Though. Yeah. So you know, times is, and unfortunately, you see, it's he's not. He won't be the only. I re- remember, was it one of the um, royal family? Um, oh, I don't know. Charles, is it? It's Charles was seen oh. whispering into into his nephew's ear or something. Oh. And that became like a big thing and everything, but like to him, that would have just been what he. Like, so what, what you do? When what you, you what, what you do when you whisper someone into you? How else do you do it? You whisper yeah. in the ear. Yeah. And yeah, so I think times have just changed. And well, I've got customers where I work, um, where they'll give you a pat on the back. Yeah. And say good job, well, and, uh, and and they'll do it to girls and boys. Yeah. The, but the, people will misconstrue it. There's a there's a man who comes around my work and he always tells old men jokes which sometimes are a little inappropriate and something that we wouldn't be able to say. Um, and I know if he were to say it to the wrong people, they'd also get offended. But personally, myself, I I understand that they're not 100% okay, but I understand that that's just a joke that he's telling. It's something that he knew, something he found funny that was acceptable back when he was a young kid. Mm. And he thinks that it's okay to say it now. I'm not, I'm not going to say, you know, look, it's not something you can do. I'm you know, working. I'm not allowed to say something like that. But I understand Yes. You know, I understand that it may not be acceptable. But people come, people yeah. come from a different time. And, yeah, exactly. And, and and sometimes when you're at that age, it, it's it's hard to acclimatize. Yeah, to, to change. The and new... even I, at age twenty, even I struggled to adapt to what new norms sort of are. Like, and yeah. you've read some of the reports how they're trying, uh, they're putting the Bechdel tests on Winnie the Pooh, Thomas the Tank Engine, to try and oh, remove those from libraries. Okay, that, that's actually fake news right there. That was misreported by Sunrise, actually. Uh, really. Sorry. Yeah, um, oh, it's actually not. I haven't got any notes on it, unfortunately. No, that's right. But I did read that, like, it's it's very it's very complicated. It's like a bit. I, I officially don't trust Sunrise anymore. Even that's a bit weird to say. Like, I trusted it before. You don't trust like, Koshi? Oh, not Koshi. No, <laughs> <laughs> not Koshi. <laughs> um, but it was originally like a statement from the Victorian Liberal Party. Uh, something, something like uh, it was. It was very. It was like outdated research or something like that. And they try to misconjure it to affect the Labour Party, even though... Uh, yeah, I can't say yeah, 100%. Right, yeah. well, I cannot remember but you, but, me. But you can say with validity that it was misreported. But it was what was it about? Sorry, what was it about? So uh, it was basically about uh, the, the Victorian uh, government wanted... So this is the state government. Yeah. They wanted to put forward a petition to put the Bechdel test, which is... Uh, basically, the Bechdel test says if two or more women are talking in a scene or a segment or a page, uh, a, something, so two women have to talk about something that hasn't have to do with men yep. or related to a men's struggle. If it fails that test, then it's sexist. 
So oh. they were going to put that like, so say if Piglet, no, Piglet's a guy. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. So the, they were going to look through the, the these, you know, works of fiction that were all read when we were a kid yeah. and see if there were two female characters that had their own character arcs that weren't related to the male characters in the story. Yes. Um, and they were going to remove them from the libraries in Victoria. Because it was, it was wow. all fake. Yeah. But it was all fake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so on on puppets, or I mean, on, sorry, on, yeah, yeah, no, on, I, on I love this characters. next bit of news. This is my favorite thing. Says, I was, yeah. I was so looking forward to this movie. Mm. Okay, well, I was the opposite. Really, I, th- really? I, I totally agree with this being. Well, I'll read it. Okay. So Sesame Street uh, sues R-rated Muppet movie, The Happy Time Murders, for tarnishing good name. They filed a lawsuit against the producers of the new R-rated film uh, with the Jen Henson Company misusing their brand. It follows the story of Mac- uh, Melissa McCarthy and uh, this Muppet. And it's and the the hook of the movie is that it's profane. It's like Sausage Party for Muppets. Yeah, and yeah. If you guys don't remember what Sausage Party that came out in 2016, <laughs> we don't and need to remember it. It's, <laughs> it's a it's a wild movie. It's a while ago. We well, just recovered. And this is wild, the same yeah. appeal for it. It's got the it's got the profane I, tag to it. I think. So tell me what you guys think of it. I'm so for it. Just yeah. Because I like Sausage, Sausage Party was great because it takes something that we all grew up with. So we grew up with two Toy Story and all that, which yeah. is animated films. In this case, it's Sesame Street, which is all. Puppets or Muppets, actually. Mm. I'm all for it just because it's something for adults to remember back yes. when they were kids. But now this has kind of grown up for them and it's kind of weird and wacky. And I like that because it's funny. It's so yeah. funny yeah, to it have something hilarious. innocent like a kid's show completely turn into this crazy R-rated adventure. In my and opinion. it says that in the trailers, which is what I like because that was a big issue with, say, Deadpool. When it first came yeah. out, a lot of parents went to Deadpool thinking it was about the comics, but it wasn't. So I love mm. how they've pitched this. I'm confused. But, that, but, but, but that's 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 poor uh, reciting of information on the parent side because it, if you've it is, ever no. read a Deadpool comic, it is obscene. I know, and it is yeah, I know. Mm. But people just people go they superheroes. Like a Marvel movie. Yeah, they go yeah. superheroes. Kids. Um, mm. The thing I'm confused uh, with is the Jim Henson Company has made this um, movie. Mm. The Jim Henson Company also helped make Sesame Street. Jim Henson's puppets are Sesame Street. Oh, so that's what I'm confused at because. To use puppets would mean that you're using Jim Henson's creations, Sesame Street using Jim Henson's creation, which means how and why is Sesame Street suing itself, essentially? Yeah, it's a bit weird. That's, I'm, I have to look into it to yeah. see more about it, but like, I love Jim Henson's puppets. I love mm. them. Um, yeah. oh, the Muppets are just great. It's just very... I love how I they're... Just, nice I, I, ju- I just feel, and this is my opinion, <gasps> I just feel... Here we yeah, go. Here we go. Again. Controversial opinion alert. <laughs> I just feel that... It's like, so the difference between a movie like Deadpool and Sausage Party, mm. there's a reason for Deadpool to exist. Yes. Sausage Party. I hated Sausage. I'm just going to put it out I there. Hated I, it. Hated, I, I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. It was rude to be oh, rude. It okay. just existed because That's it was exactly, there. There, okay. There's yeah. no, you, you can point to Deadpool. Look at Deadpool 2, for example. I won't spoil it, but a big theme of the movie is about acceptance and family. It has a reason yeah. to exist. What's Sausage Party's theme? I just like dumb stuff, okay. But, but that's the thing. There's, there's and, and no that was great. That was it. great. But it ended yeah. in oh, the yeah, way the, it the, ended. The, and it was ending, like, yeah, you could tell yeah. that it was just to be rude. The other yeah, thing I actually, didn't like, yeah, there was uh, allegations that the animation team for the movie wasn't, weren't being paid correctly. Oof. And that's another big reason why I didn't like it. But other than that, yeah, you know. I, 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 I personally feel this Happy Time Murders, it doesn't have a reason to exist other than, hey, look, this is a property people are familiar with. Let's be obscene with it. What I see, and, and yeah, unless I it goes see. with the A, like it, it, it's probably going to go with the typical Hollywood agenda. It's like, hey, look, you have character A, character B, don't like each other. First mm. two acts. At the end of the second act, where you have the fir- the, the second act low, yeah. something's going to make the two characters A and B dislike mm. each other. Yeah. But then in the third act, they're going to come together and realize they've changed as people. Mm. That is a formula that Hollywood has stuck to, and it's been consistent. That's something I don't want to see in a movie. And I'm sorry, that's what they're going to. Uh, that's how I feel. What they're going to bring to it. It's just going to be another formulaic by the numbers obscene Hollywood movie with Melissa McCarthy and I'm yeah. sorry I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna support it that's right I, okay. I, I can see why this is coming out at this time though mm. um, The Incredibles is coming out Ooh, there is a yeah. specific and so like and remember when Monsters Inc. 2 came out all the and, and the Finding one? Nemo yes University yeah, the, the Monsters University. University. I like it was like a prequel too. yeah yeah. so all, all us kids who watched these movies when we were kids are now going back in the cinemas to watch these movies and Event Cinemas has a screening for The Incredibles which is an adults only screening I love it with alcohol and yeah without so yeah. even though the movie is still for kids only adults can watch the movie for us adults to go back and enjoy we've been it we waiting for 15 years exactly or so. <laughs> by ourselves without the kids and I like 
this because not only is this for adults only, but the content in the movie is again just for adults only. So I yeah. think it comes at a nice time. Yeah, it could it could be good, it could be bad. Yeah. Again, this, and I, I completely I see where you're coming from though, and I completely agree. If it's just going to turn out to be one of these basic Hollywood, you know, rude well, movies, formulaic things, comedies. Yeah, then you're right, and that's you'll go there, you'll watch the movie, and you'll go, mm, "This movie really sucked." Because if you look at the core of Sausage Party, that's exactly what it. it and they, yeah, and yeah, I didn't for the like first it. two acts. The, the, yeah. the, 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 the two mains were like, and then at the end of the second act, they're like, "Oh, we have to split apart for some reason because movie." Yeah, exactly. Um, to, to, to quote a YouTuber. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, that's exact. That's exactly what yeah. I'm expecting, and I'm not going to support it. I don't want drivel on my screen. I just feel it's going to be drivel. There's yeah. nothing. And it, it has no reason to exist. I can see where that risk is coming from. I, mm. I, will, I honestly, I will still probably go see it. And if I'm disappointed by it, then I will say it sucked. I'm not going to hold that back. Yeah. Oh, but it was this. If it has a good story, then it's worth my time. Mm. So a modern day masterpiece is the Emoji Movie. Oh no, nah, no! Nah, <laughs> get, get out of my studio. Come on, get on, out. Get out. Uh, coming up, hurt somebody by Noah Kahan. Right now, we have something coming up. Oh, we have the, an interview coming yeah. up. A, su- a surprise family member. Oh yeah. Interview. Which one of us three has a father? <laughs> 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 Guess on Twitter. <laughs> uh, but right now, Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. Somebody. And that was hurt somebody by Noah Kahan. You listen to mornings live on local on Brisbane Youth Radio on eleven ninety seven AM and the Radio Outline at radio dot com you. So on the line we have one of our dads. Whose dads is it? <laughs> we'll find out. We'll, we'll let's find out now. Hello, Mario. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hello, everybody. How are you going? I'm oh, pretty good. Good. Thank you. good morning. So, Mario, of course, is Alistair's dad, which oh. is... Yep. <laughs> Hello. I, 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 don't, don't sound so impressed about that, <laughs> Mario. <laughs> <laughs> how are you guys uh we're, we're well we're well um so if you didn't know well, i'm recovering i'll tell you this um so mario uh, he's a manager in a customer facing role in the av- aviation industry with over 30 years of experience of work experience in many different industries so mario in your 30 plus years in the workforce what jobs have you had um well yeah so what jobs have you held and what have they entailed yeah what um what, what, what's my career was I'm the fifth generation uh, customer service. So my grand grandfather was a hotel concierge. My grandfather was a metro d. My uh, my dad was a, a reception, and I was a concierge. So I'm a concierge by trade. So I am at the end of the line, of course, because I decided to do something completely different. <laughs> and uh, in my 30, 35 years, I started 15 years old um, working. And um, in my 35 years, my complete dedication was to customer service. So that's the only thing I, I, I know what to, how to do it. <laughs> that's the only thing I know how to do well. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. So I started yeah. when, I was, uh, when, I was, when I was 15. My uh, job in Italy, we have uh, school breaks in between uh, June and September. So mm-hmm. I, would, um, I would work for three months there just in the hotel. And my first job, I remember, was a very important, responsible one. I was in charge of emptying the ashtrays in the Royal Hotel in San Remo. So that oh, was wow. just my that, that was just my, my responsibilities. I just do have to make sure that uh, uh, our customers, of course, thirty five years ago, um, smoking wasn't a sin, and um, I was just um, my job was just to empty the ash- ashtrays. So after that, I graduated to open the doors of cars, of course, and um, so on and so forth. I um, I sort of stepped up the ladder and. I became a, um, a night porter, I did page boys, I, I was a, um, a day concierge, and then, of course, I started my uh, flight attendant life, and, uh, and yeah, that's where I am now. That's so amazing. it was like a, a steady and slowly progression to the customer service jobs. So because of that, that, that uh, gradual succession to where you are now, what attributes and qualities uh, did you have yourself? And as a manager now, what would you ha- look for in potential employees? Well, you know, there's, uh, Alistair, there's, there's, there's a lot of degrees in human resources with, that, that I, I don't, simply I don't possess. So I, I'm not going to he- stay here and pretend and, and, and tell people what they should look for and everything because I'm just not qualified enough. What I, what I can see from a practical side, what I like to see from, an, from, an, from a manager point of view, it's a genuinely proactive attitude to what you 
co- my colleagues and and, uh, and uh, my working colleagues. So, for example, in, in putting in layman terms, if there is a um, a dirty table, don't uh, uh, wait for your manager to go and and tell you oh, you should clean the table. Clean the table straight away. Uh, anticipate your customer needs. If someone needs a glass of water or whatever. Don't um, wait for them to ask. Just try to think what they might like and mo- what they might need at that particular moment. And then anticipating those needs and genuinely proactive attitude, it gets you a long way in the customers, um, in, the, in the face customers industry. Absolutely. It's like being proactive instead of reactive. Exactly. Proactive. Anticipate what they need. It's, it's, it's a service industry. You have to be there in order for them to a, experience their flight or experience their restaurant, experience their restaurant experience, as you say, experience, uh, um, you know, uh, the beautiful coffee that your establishment provides. So you there to uh, make sure that their experience, it's uh, second to none. It's the best experience so they can come back. Yeah, and what advice can you give to teenagers and young adults working in maintaining their employment? Uh, well, all, all, I say that all, uh, all, all companies, they um, uh, would like a reliable and a loyal and accountable uh, employee. Accountable for uh, their mistakes. Um, put your hands up if you make a mistake, of course, own it. And uh, try to learn from it. Of course, loyal. Just uh, just get into the company that you're working. Share the vision. Uh, go and research the vision of the company. Go and research their credo. And uh, and of course, um, being a reliable one. Of course, this this stage it's like uh, um, it's casual casual jobs all the time. So pick up that phone when they ring you for a shift or. or be make yourself available to their company. That's that's when you when you're reliable like that, you tend to uh, uh, you tend to keep your job for for a long time. Mm. Uh, and any um, an- oh, what's this word, Alistair? Sorry. Anecdotes, anecdotes, and personal examples you would like to share. <laughs> oh, well, 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 this this industry, of course, is fantastic. But I I remember once because I was I was 22. I was uh, working in London then. I was working at the Hyde Park Hotel in London. I so was, this would have been in the uh, early 90s, mind you. So if that was, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's prehistoric. I think the dinosaur just died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure that just died. I have to check on that. But anyway, I was. 20 and uh, um, I was night portering of course at the Hyde Park Hotel in London and around 3 o'clock in the morning of course the door, the main door was closed and this fella comes in and this fella happened to be Morrissey which at that oh, wow. age was my idol <laughs> and of course um, it goes without saying that I looked exactly like him because I was skinny, I was 21 I had hair, believe it or not <laughs> <laughs> I had jaw, I had a jaw, not jeans I just had a jaw, so I did look like him and of course, I was looking outside and I saw Morrissey and Morrissey was looking inside because he wanted to come back and, and go to sleep, poor bugger. So, and I wouldn't open the door and Jesse Kandu say, are you going to open the door for me? He said, oh my God. And starstruck, I was there and my, I went in a bubble and I opened the door and, and everything. Oh, Mr. Morrissey, oh, how are you? And that's it. I was starstruck. And then in this job, in this line of work, it happens every time. Mm. And it's just fantastic. That's why I love it so much. Yeah, for those for those who didn't know, Morrissey is the lead singer and uh, vocalist of a band called no, The Smiths. No, no, see, see my age, I assume everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yes, uh, that, that's I'm who Morrissey was. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Mario. It's thank lovely, you for having me, Nate. It's lovely talking to you, and you know, it's such an awesome job that you have, and of, of, over your life, of course, because you have so many awesome stories, <laughs> just like that one. Um, again, it's it's like what yeah. you said. It's about knowing the ethos and the credos of the company, and valuing that makes you a, val- a valuable asset to the company itself. Absolutely, so. invest sometimes in in believe what they. Do what your company that you're working do and show it and that show and it. smile. If there is one piece of advice that I can give you guys, just smile because if you smile, the customer knows that you're happy that you're there, you're happy what you're doing and you're happy for you're working for. Exactly. Smile, smile. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Pleasure. Thanks, All Dan. good. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, and, you guys. And this will be the end of our show now. It's uh, yeah. almost 12 o'clock. Um, and thank you for joining us this uh, this today, this morning. Mm. Um, it's been a great morning. morning. It has. It's been wonderful. Productive. Lots of chats with people. And yeah, it's been great. Mm. Um, just to end the show, we have um, a little little bop called Havana. 
by Camila Cabello. Beautiful. Thank you so much again for having me, guys. Thanks again to our Thanks Gabby, our coming. lovely producer, for getting yes. us all the up-to-date yeah. info. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> um, and again, we'll be back here next week on Monday from uh, no. the time you're on, 10 to 12. 10 to- <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>